Hey everyone, I'm going to try and make this video short, but I want to do a rant on Stan Meyer's VIC. Now I've all built the drive circuits, we can get them to work. We can use old IC chips like I've used in my boards uh, that came from the 70s and 80s, they work just fine. We can use new um, software systems to produce the signals, we can use microcontrollers, we can use existing uh, frequency generators and signal generators. So. The signals are not a problem at all. All of our problems are because of the VIC. And I want to get into all the variables of the VIC because if you don't understand them, and even if you do understand them, they're almost impossible to get correct. Every single variable has to be matched and aligned to the other variables correctly. If any one of them is not correct, it'll prevent the circuit from working. It'll never work. And this is a problem I continue to come across over and over again. Now since 2008, I've probably designed and tested 30 to 40 different VIC circuits. I've tried to replicate it exactly as Stan's with values as close to his as I could get. Didn't work. I tried to make my own designs with different cells. Didn't work. I had the same problem every time and it all relies and it's all dependent on the VIC. If we can figure out how to get the VIC correct, this technology will not be complicated at all. So, first of all, if we look at the VIC, and I'm talking about the one that Stan Meyer used to um, drive his 11 cell water fuel cell. Um, right before he designed the injectors, the water fuel injectors, this is the cell, the setup that he had. It actually did run the car, and it was the one encased in the Delrin, the white plastic uh, tubing. So, that VIC, had a primary, a secondary coil, and two chokes all on the same core. And it was made out of two U-shaped cores pushed together. And that VIC is the one, again, I think the most important and probably the easiest one to replicate out of all of them. People have tried to do the uh, injector VIC. That's a whole different ballgame, in my opinion, from what I've looked at. So, the inputs. Now, the inputs are things we have control of in real time and that we can change easily with very little effort. The inputs are the voltage, the gate frequency, the gate duty cycle, the pulse frequency, and the pulse duty cycle. And when I talk about the pulse, I'm talking about the resonant frequency, the higher frequency in the circuit. A lot of people say the gate duty cycle and the pulse duty cycle don't need to be changed. The pulse duty cycle is supposed to be 50% and Stan claimed from the source that I talked to many years ago. He told me that the pulse duty cycle actually changes and it's uh, inversely related to frequency. So the higher you get up in the frequency, the lower that duty cycle needs to be. Now the gate duty cycle is directly related to the LR time constant of the circuit. So all these variables here, these are just five variables. You'll see a much bigger list here in a second, but all these five have to be correct. Now let me make a list of the rest of the variables and they're much more complicated because they're part of the design engineering process of the coils themselves and they're extremely difficult to get right. So let me make that list and we'll look at it. Okay, the, these are some of the variables in the VIC that all have to be correct in order for it to work. Look at the primary coil resistance primary coil inductance, primary coil leakage inductance, the number of turns in the primary coil, secondary coil resistance, secondary coil inductance, secondary coil leakage inductance, the number of turns in the secondary coil, choke L1 resistance, choke L1 inductance, choke L1 leakage inductance, number of turns on the choke L1 coil, choke L2 resistance, choke L2 inductance, choke L2 leakage inductance, the number of turns on the L2 choke. Then in the transformer itself, we've got the turns ratio, the impedance ratio, and the coupling factor, which is the leakage between the individual coils and how they interact together. If any one of these is not right, the VIC coil is never going to work. And I'd like for somebody to prove me otherwise, because everything that I've done over the years shows that there's only one problem here, and I'll talk about that in a second, that is the problem of the whole VIC coil. And it, all has to do with the leakage inductance between all the coils. <clears throat> Stan Meyer's VIC transformer, all of them, in my opinion, they're designed to have a high leakage inductance. Now what does that do? 
and actually used to restrict the current, the peak, the, the peak or the short circuit current, but at the same point, it causes the VIC to have very poor voltage regulation, which means if you have a one to 10 turn ratio, you apply 10 volts to your primary coil, you should be getting 100 volts on the secondary side and across the load, you might be getting 30 volts. Um, that is a big problem with this whole thing. And it's one problem only. If your relationships between your leak inductance and your actual coil inductance are not correct, it will never work again. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more to it than we ever thought. And getting these all right is, is a big challenge. Now, it's easy to get the, uh, the number of turns correct, the resistance correct, and the inductance correct. It's the leakage inductance and the coupling between the coils that's the difficult part for all of them. Because when we try and adjust our leakage inductance values or our inductance values, we change one or the other. And that throws the whole thing off. So the big problem, again, is between our inductance and our leakage inductance values. That determines the, uh, the voltage drop that we're seeing across the load. And it determines how much voltage we're actually going to see. Essentially, the leakage inductance is just like adding another inductor in series with the circuit, which is not coupled to the transformer. So each one of those leakage inductances has its own reactance, its own impedance, which presents a very high voltage drop if the number's appreciable at all. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much more I want to get into, but we'll say the chokes aren't necessarily chokes, they're just coupled inductors. And between them is also a large leakage inductance, which in my opinion is what the cell resonates with. And the leakage inductance on the secondary coil <coughs> at resonance is very high. And it, along with the diode, is what prevents current from flowing back through the secondary coil at resonance. And so it takes an easier, uh, less lower impedance path through the coupling of the chokes. That's a big one right there. If you guys don't understand what I said, I think that's where we're at. I think that's how the whole thing works, really. So. The leakage inductance of the primary and secondary coils determines the short circuit current. It limits the current at resonance as well. Um, but it causes the VIC to have very poor voltage regulation. Because of that, Stan added the chokes. Those chokes, in a way, are additional secondary coils. They make up for the lost voltage across that voltage drop across the leakage inductance. Now, the problem now becomes you've just added another leakage inductance between the chokes. But if you use that leakage inductance to resonate with the cell, and then you can use the, the coupling of the chokes to provide a shorter, um, a lower impedance path, then you produce the AC circuit and you bypass the diode at resonance. Much more to it than that. But again, it's those leakage inductance and inductance values and the ratios between all the different coils that have to be correct. And if any one of those is wrong, you're never going to see it work. That's all I got for now. Again, leave your comments. I really appreciate it. This is where I'm at. I can get it to work. I really think that I can. But getting these values correct is almost impossible because it all has to be designed specifically to work beforehand. Now, if you, if you just design the coil values and you put it all together and then you try and adjust your leakage to make up for the difference, as soon as you do that, then your uh, inductance on your coils change and again, you throw the whole thing off. So, share your comments, share your opinions, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care.